G'day guys, welcome to part 8 of the X-Ray X1 build series. In part 8 we are going to be assembling the oil filled shock. Now um, with this particular kit uh, it has a side damper. Now I have gone ahead and I have assembled it. Now as you can see it is a lot different it, it, uh, physically it is different to uh, the oil filled shock and spring assembly however it is when it comes to assembly it is 95 percent identical in procedure to assembly there are a few uh, minor differences but apart from that it is exactly the same um, so when you go through, I'm not going to, obviously as you can see I've already built it, so I'm not going to go through with you the assembly procedure. Um, I'm just going to go through with the uh, shock. But, like I said, it is 95% identical in assembly procedure. Just follow the instructions, and yeah, it, it is, it is, it's pretty easy. So anyway, let's get on with assembling the shock. Now, things you'll need... Uh, you'll need a hobby knife, some pliers. I have here some Team Associated Factory Team Green Slime. I'll show you what I use that for. Obviously, you'll need the shock oil. Uh, this is the Hootie shock oil that comes with the kit. It's 600 weight or 600 CST weight. And obviously, you'll need the parts necessary to assemble the shock. So, first of all, what we need is our shock shaft and shock piston and two eclipses. Now, with your shock pistons, they come on a it comes on a tree, a parts tree, and if you'll see, I've uh, with a permanent marker, I've marked out which shocks are what. Uh, you can't see it on camera, but um, they're marked uh, by their thickness. And you can see that uh, you got three that are three holes and three that are two holes, and they vary in thickness. So the permanent marker just helps make it easier for you to identify which shock piston is what. So for kit setup, uh, it recommends the three hole piston at 1.2 millimeters in thickness. So first of all, let's put this together. Get an e clip, carefully put it on to the shock shaft. Click. Alright. Put the shock piston on. And put the next clip on. Carefully put it on, make sure you don't lose it as I almost just did. There we go. Make sure it's in nice and snug. All right. So it looks like that. Easy. Okay, so we'll put that there. Now the next part is to put in uh, the O-ring and a little plastic part for it. Now this is where the green slime comes in. So with the green slime, what I'll do is it says to put you shock oil but I find green slime works better uh, I find it because what, it, what it's supposed to do is seal uh, the o-ring, help seal the o-ring so you put the o-ring in alright so now a bit more green slime and then what we'll do is put this plastic part in. Now take note of its orientation. Uh, you see there's a small uh, lip on top that has to face away from the O-ring. So that just goes in. Alright, now what we do is put the collar on. Careful not to thread it, like cross thread it, 
and it sits in there just like that. <laughs> All right, now next part, what we do, O-ring and the preload collar, this is what adjusts the preload on the shock spring. Just stick it in like so. Just put your finger in there, make sure it's seated correctly. Probably can't see it's seated inside the collar. Okay, now with a bit of shock oil to help lubricate it. All right. And just thread it on. We won't do it up all the way. However, because we'll need to put the cap on afterwards. So we'll do that after. So put it up about halfway. All right, now, now the next procedure is to put the shock shaft through. Carefully put it through. All right, now, excuse me. Now with a rag here, just wipe off the excess and pull the shock shaft through. Or wipe off the excess green slime that is. Okay, so like that. Then what we'll do is with some shock pliers, because these, um, these pliers have uh, grooves in them, shock shaft will sit in the groove, and then we'll twist the eyelet on. Very carefully, just give me a sec. It's gonna fight me, isn't it? All right, so what, in this case, what we'll, we'll do is with the scalpel, very carefully so you don't cut yourself, we'll just knurl out like a cone section and that'll just help the thread go in. There we go. Still putting up a bit of a fight. Alright so what we'll do is have to use these pliers here with the side cutters on it just so I can get a grip on just on the tip of the thread here. making a fool of me. I might have to do it, fix it off camera but I'll put it on as best I can on camera. Honestly what the hell. Okay it's not supposed to look crooked like that so I'm going to take it off and I'll fix it off camera. All right, so we'll pretend that I've put that on. All right, so what we'll do, what the next part will be is to fill it with oil. So what we have here is a shock pump. Do not confuse it for something else. So we'll put some oil in. Don't fill it up completely, just push the shock shaft up and pull it back down. There'll be air in there. Then we'll fill it up completely. Then what we do is put the cap on and then pump away. Now the reason why I'm using this uh, generally, I'll leave a shock and let it sit there for about oh, 30 minutes to half to 45 minutes. Um, that way, it, it has there's plenty of time for the air to escape. But since I'm not going to do that, 
I'm going to speed up the process. I did have some spare parts for the shock, but it, it is very frustrating that I couldn't get the little eyelet on the shock shaft. So while we're just waiting for the air to come out, like I said, there's always every build series that I've done, it doesn't matter which car it is, there's always something that goes wrong. And unfortunately, I cannot help it. Here we go. So once, once we get the cap on, we will try the shaft again. All right, so now that that's done, what we'll do is we'll get to the assembly of the cap. And it's pretty easy. All you have to do, get the collar, put the eyelet through there, then sponge goes in the middle, then the shock bladder, just, uh, I've done this off camera, but check the shock bladder to make sure that there's no damage whatsoever, it should be fine, but sometimes someone in the factory just not paying attention, and carefully with a Allen driver, just make sure the shock bladder is seated correctly. All right. So now what we're going to do is set the rebound. Now rebound is how far the shock will come out when you compress it, and to do that. What we do, I want zero or well, very little rebound. So to do that, what we'll do is we'll push the shock shaft all the way, not the thread though. And then put the cap on. A lot of oil will come out. And be careful with the cap not to thread it, cross thread it. Okay, so push the shock shaft in and see, comes out a little way. So that's, that's the rebound that we want. Okay, so now just with a rag, we will wipe off the excess oil. And we'll just wind up the preload collar. I really want to get this little eyelet on the shock shaft. I don't want to have to do this off camera. Alright, so we'll try it again carefully. Put it on. This is a new one. really not wanting to play ball. This is very, very frustrating. on folks I will check it after off camera so now all we have to do is put the spring on put the uh, spring cap on there it is folks finished spring sorry about the hassles but unfortunately that's how it goes when you're doing it live without any editing <laughs> all right guys so that's the end of part eight 
part nine we will uh, attach the shock and side damper to the chassis we're kind of getting towards this is probably the home stretch so then the next part will be just putting in the steering and electronics stay tuned everyone <laughs>